This right here is why your EDC fixed blade probably sucks. Let's talk about it. All right, guys, so I figured today I would go over my two EDC, remaining EDC fixed blades. Now, I've sold off quite a few knives, and who knows, I might sell off more, but of my remaining EDC fixed blades, it pretty much comes down to just these two. The half-face blades, Disaster Junior, and the Browse Blades Silent Soldier. I also may or may not have a Topps Ice Dagger, and this is technically in the EDC knife collection or in here, but at the same time too, it's not necessarily one that, uh, it's kind of like for special occasions, I guess you could say. So that one is kind of notwithstanding. Anyways, today I want to talk about these two remaining ones, talk about why they're my remaining ones and why I still really like them. So first off, let's talk about the tiny Browse Blade Silent Soldier. I don't even think I can sit on my truck to talk about this one because it is so small. If I sit all the way back on the truck, you probably won't be able to really see it that well. Anyways, this is the Silent Soldier V2. This is of course the drop point. And this one is partly staying in my collection because it is unobtainium. These things are definitely no longer made. Browse or Jason Browse from Browse Blades really doesn't make th these types of knives anymore. And I guess that's cool. It's also partially due to some litigation issues but realistically uh, coming up in the knife scene this was a knife a tiny little guy like a neck knife that I always wanted I loved how fascinating and quirky it was that you know it like had these finger holes and stuff so that is part of the reason like the story the history behind this guy because it's only made out of d2 it's nothing like this is honestly probably fairly cheap to make because it's literally just a tiny piece of like quarter inch D2 tool steel. But aside from that, it is very convenient and very easy to carry. And what initially drew me to it was that I wanted something that would be a very good utility neck knife that you could just throw on and totally forget it's there. And this Browse Blade Silent Soldier totally does that. It is very much along the lines of a dog tag knife, um, similar to Spyderco's um, dog tag knife or like Serge Penchenko's dog tag knife, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's his collaboration with Spider Co. Um, so this kind of falls in a very similar line and came at a very similar time. So that's uh, part of the reason why I like it. And like I said, for a little utility knife for like opening packages, you know, just doing basic cuts and stuff, even doing some more like advanced stuff, maybe some like food processing, you'd want to be, you know, mindful because you're using D2, which is a higher carbon tool steel. Um, but at the same time too, you could totally do it with this little guy and it would work perfectly fine. And so I think like for those reasons, I, I think it's just like a no brainer. It's also, like I said, just sheer unobtainium and for a knife that I would probably regret if I sold it and knew I couldn't get it back, um, it just stays in the collection. Now, to be fair, I don't usually carry um, fixed blades every day, but this is definitely one that stays in the roster for those reasons. It's just too cool to me and like I said, the history of it is pretty pretty dope and also too i should say it's worth noting that coming up in the knife industry i did really want a silent soldier for quite some time but this was one of those knives that like when it dropped in the mid 20 teens it was like impossible to get these so it was it was definitely a trick to find one luckily i did get one you know years after i think i got this one in like 2018 i've had it for years but um yeah, I want to say I got it in like 2017 or 2018, and I've had it ever since. And luckily, at the time, these things were kind of like when I got it, they were just kind of like no one cared about them. So I got this one for like a whopping $60. And uh, normally, for those who don't know, these went brand new for uh, about $120. So they are not by any means cheap. And at the time, I probably should have thought about that. I'm like, literally, it's a small piece of d2 going for 120 plus dollars the more intricate like they had some warncliffe versions and some different like crazy options on these they those went for like 130 150 bucks so around there they were pretty pricey little pieces of d2 tool steel at the time but obviously the knife culture has changed and evolved <laughs> so anyways it's a cool really uh, utility oriented blade. Now moving on to the other one in the collection is my half face blades disaster junior. Hopefully you guys can see this guy. It's just a sheer black knife on a not so black background, but this is a disaster junior. And part of the reason why this one is in the collection to stay is because it was very kindly gifted to me by one of my, um, 
subscribers, so I really appreciate that. Whenever a subscriber gives me a knife, like it's definitely a not for sale knife. Um, so that's a part of the reason, but also too, I really like this knife because it kind of suits if I'm going to EDCF fixed blade, it's probably gonna be something that's either for sheer utility or for heavy duty. And I like that fact that this is made out of CPM 3V. It has very much that prying tip, as you guys can see. This is the type of thing that you can like jam into an area or like a, you know something you can jam into and just pry on it laterally and is not going to snap that tip. Partly because it's CPM 3V, which is an incredibly tough steel, but also partly because of that flared out tip that gives you a little bit of extra um, just area overall so when you go to stab it into things and pry laterally it's distributing that force and that weight across a broader area so that is ultimately the core of what the disaster junior was designed for it was designed to be a heavy use hard use blade but i feel like it's also because it's a junior it's a little bit smaller you can see in comparison to my hand you know it's just a little bit wider than the width of my hand so still very edc friendly still very carryable when i want to have something that's definitely going to be a lot more robust than say this guy isn't terribly unrobust but say something like this um uh, Heretic Knives Manicore X. Like this is gonna be a little bit more lighter duty, whereas this guy's gonna be a lot more heavy duty. So yeah, as I was saying, most of the time when it comes down to an EDC fixed blade, it's going to be either for heavy and hard use or something that's going to be, you know, very easy to just throw on your neck, kind of forget about it, and it just be still a really good um, general purpose utility blade. In addition, like I said, having something that's, uh, you know, like out of your pockets might be handy for certain situations. So definitely respect the Browse Blade Silent Soldier for those reasons. But oftentimes when I do EDC a knife, it's probably going to be for more robust applications and oftentimes you know this might end up being kind of more of a uh, wilderness EDC blade if I'm going out you know into the woods to have something that's not quite a full-on like full survival knife like the uh, CRK Pacific or you know an SRK by Cold Steel but have something that is you know robust can handle a lot of abuse if push comes to shove. So that's a lot of the reason why this guy remains. It's also just a pretty cool knife. I'm not gonna lie, half face blades make some really cool looking blades. So even if it's not the most comfortable in hand, though I think this one like is genuinely pretty comfortable. Um, half face blades doesn't always lean into the most practical knives, but they do make some really cool looking blades. So anyways, that is kind of a overlook at my EDC fixed blade game and what it's kind of pared down to be. Obviously, I definitely lean, as you guys can see here, more into folders. And I think like the general channel direction is leaning more towards, you know, EDC folders as a rule. And that's why, you know, like sell off some of the outdoor knives to get some more EDC knives. And, you know, that's kind of how that process rolls. But anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.